This season is sponsored by Crossway. As Christians, we all want to be living out our gospel identity, and the world of social media presents a constant battleground as we work out what it is to be holy in the digital realms. Paul Tripp's new book, Reactivity, helps us with the challenges by helping us drill down to the heart-level reasons as to why we react and respond to others as we do. This is a helpful, pertinent book that makes us think twice before we tweet or post and encourages us to glorify God in every medium. Grab a copy wherever you get your books. Welcome to Two Sisters in a Cup of Tea. My name is Sarah. I live in the UK. This is my sister Felicity. She lives in the States. And today we are getting into the final part of the letter, the second half of chapter five of First Thessalonians. Felicity, good to see you. Now, I'm presuming you've got your cup of tea ready. Um, tell me what your thoughts are on tea and biscuits at church, you know, after the service finishes. How, what's what's the vibe over with you? Oh, Sarah, I long for tea and biscuits after church. We don't have it. <laughs> we don't have it. Oh. I feel like uh, we, and I say we, my husband and I have been petitioning for it, you know, just quietly amongst amongst the gathered, uh, you know, imagine if you had a hot drink in your hand right now as we're trying <laughs> to do the conversation, you know, in the school. We, we meet in a school, so it's a kind of school hall kind of vibe. I feel like tea and biscuits would really enhance that vibe quite a lot. I was trying to explain to mm. um, my friends, it's not so much about the quality of the tea or in fact, even the quality of the biscuits. It's just about There's having no quality. Yeah. the biscuits is a no. <laughs> they're kind of the 18p ones from asda aren't they yeah, <laughs> yeah. what about you? you does your yeah. church go big on it our church goes relative relatively big i think on it um they have it and uh i think i think i've grown to really value it i think lockdown taught us that the um the tea and biscuit chat when we didn't have it for months and months and months you realised how important it was and how valuable it was to have that kind of lingering around time before and after church um, and how those conversations kind of help you get into the bigger conversations of what it looks like to encourage each other. Um, so I love the tea and biscuit chat. It's all in all, we're in favour. I, I agree. I think that's why it's just that thing, it's that thing to do, isn't it? So you don't, you don't feel like, oh, I haven't got anything to do. I haven't got anything to talk to you, so I'm just going to go. But it's like, oh, no, I can mm-hmm. just go and grab a biscuit. And and that will give me a reason to stick around a bit longer. And the kids yeah. like it a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we had very grumpy kids last week because there were no biscuits. I was like, oh, how are we going to get through this after church bit without a biscuit? It was tough. It was tough. Yeah, tell you. Anyway, okay. So we're in the we're getting stuck into the last part of the letter today, um, which is is full. It's full to overflowing with with things to talk about. Um, so we'll see how far we get. Um, Shall I read read it for us? Yes, go for it. Okay. So I'm going to be reading chapter 5, verses 12 to 28. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good, reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. Greet all God's people with a holy kiss. I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers and sisters. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Thanks, Sarah. It's, it's, when, I feel, when I first read that, it feels like quite a list, you know? Mm. I feel like, you know, well, it's just kind of ticking off a bunch of stuff. It is, isn't it? In the sense that the subheading is final instructions, like it is like a list, isn't it? It's true. A list of instructions. But when mm-hmm. I see a list, then my temptation is to just kind of skim over it a little bit. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I feel like one of the questions I've been mulling this week is how do these items on the list relate to what has come before and the letter as a whole? Mm. And that's where our final tool of the season comes in handy, isn't it? The so what tool, because actually without the so what, 
there's what's the point what's the <laughs> point of of the whole of the rest of the letter if it's not put into action and if it's not kind of um making an inroad on our hearts and then on our lives and so that's the so what tool isn't it it's asking so what because of what I know now because of what I've been told and what I've been shown what does that actually mean on the ground what does that look like and what we have here at the end of the letter is like a massive so what yeah. don't we because this <laughs> this is this is real church lived out in the flesh in real life and he's giving instructions for what it looks like to put the rest of the letter in practice I think Yes, I think that's so true. And that's such a good explanation of the so what tool. And I think that's a really good way of thinking about what we've got in front of us here. I was really struck by um, the way in which it relates all the way back to the first few verses of the letter, really. When mm, he talks how do you about, see that? Well, if you were to flick back with me, you'd see verse three. He's talking to Thessalonians. He says, we remember before our God and Father, your work produced by faith, your labour prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope. And all the way through the letter, I think we've seen faith, love, and hope coming through. Mm -hmm. And then here, I mean, even just in the first few verses, you get it, the love. And I think we have we have this um, love, faith, hope in action here as they're called to love one another. I think the so what mm -hmm. seems to be so what, so love one another mm -hmm. and, and wait well for Jesus' return. Like, like look to him. Yeah, and, and this kind of the work of faith, right? Because of who you are, therefore, this is what it's going to look like to be those people. It, it's kind of all part of that. We're charged to walk in the kingdom of God, and this is what it is to be the people of God. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I I got similarly actually when I was thinking about this. That the, so the first basically verses twelve. Well, I got kind of verses twelve to fifteen were kind of the love, loving one another. What does loving your neighbour look like in action? Um, I then kind of split yeah 16 to 22 kind of faith and um, what does faith look like and then 23 to the end is kind of about the hope and what we're looking forward to um and living in light of that so I kind of um split it into three really and to see that. the faith and the love and the hope um should we just take each part of that and just see let's do it let's do it so that first section, I love the way you've split up that good use of the structure tool. Mm, thank you. <laughs> um, so love, how do, we, yeah, how, do we, how do we see love played out? I thought it was noticeable to me. I was surprised in a way that he starts talking about the people in charge. Like I don't feel like mm. we've had a lot about that so far in the letter. Um, but it was a good reminder that actually the people in charge are all part of the body, this mm -hmm. church family that we're in, a wider church family. And so therefore, why wouldn't we care for them and hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. And I think it's just a really helpful reminder as to how yeah. we see the people who are, who are pastoring us, who are shepherding us. Yeah, big time. And he has modeled that as Neil the way through. Like he has shown them what it looks like both to love them and also for them to, to serve him and love him in return, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I was really struck like verse 14, I think is a really, really powerful verse. And it says, we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone. And that just feels like that 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 is a summary of a church family, isn't it? We will like there are those who are idle and disruptive. There's always going to be those who are disheartened. There's always going to be the weak. And with all of those categories, you need to be patient. Mm. Like patience is kind of the bedrock of how you respond to anyone in any of those three camps and there will be times when we're probably all of those things um and I think just being able to accept warnings being receptive to that um being able to accept encouragement when we're feeling disheartened being able to accept help when we need it when we're feeling weak but also being able to the ones who give help and the ones who give encouragement and the ones who are willing to stand up and and warn um a fellow sister or whatever who's being um, idle or disruptive like I just think it's a really powerful verse there's a lot packed into those that sentence um but the be patient with everyone that is the epitome of love isn't it actually mm -hmm. all of those things coming with with love at the heart that it's love the love of Jesus you're bringing as you do any of those things yeah really helpful and, and really helpful just to kind of almost break down what that love looks like in those verbs mm. that you were talking about there really helpful 
Okay, so we get this kind of picture, and I, I love at this at the end of verse fifteen. Always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. I love the kind of mm. all togetherness. I think throughout this whole passage, we have so much kind of one anothering, which fits mm. very well with what he's been saying all the way through the letter, doesn't it? So helpful to see what that actually looks like. Yeah, it's just such a reminder, isn't it? This is done together in community. This is a this is a church thing together. Like what you believe about the gospel impacts what you do on the ground with others mm. like it can't be in isolation can it and I think just it's, this is all these instructions are so other people centered and just a really helpful reminder of that yeah um absolutely so then we get onto this uh the next section and this idea can you just, just help us to think through why why did you label that section in relation to faith yeah so I'll, I'll go backwards so um Verse 19, for example, do not quench the spirit, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all, hold on to what is good, reject every kind of evil. Um, That's talking about the spirit's work. That's talking about the faith that we hold and the spirit's work in us. Um, That is part of our faith, isn't it? To to not quench the spirit. You know, and we had that in the chapter four as well, um, you know, in terms of... um, in relation to how they love one another um, and not rejecting God who gives you the Holy Spirit. So just, mm. yeah, just rooting that in, yeah. um, in their faith. Um, and then I think I kind of feel like the verse 16, um, 17 and 18 is very famous verses really, but that's, that's kind of, this is kind of the hinge of it all really. Um, this is the heartbeat of our faith and it's God's will for us that we should rejoice always pray continually and give thanks in all circumstances. And as we do that, I think ev- everything else in this final section kind of can happen more easily, I think. Yeah, I think that's right. I think I think that heart, the heart of rejoicing and praying mm. and giving thanks is very God-focused, isn't it? Like we're rejoicing yeah. in what the Lord has given us. We're giving thanks for all that he's given. And, so, and in prayer, we're dependent upon him. So as we, it kind of shifts our eyes to look to him more, which is an act of faith, isn't it? To trust yeah. him in all of that. And, and I love that, that as you say, that um, this is God's will for you in Christ. It just kind of echoes all the way through. We've had this authoritative, this is, this is God's gospel. This is what it is to be mm. God's people. This is God's will for you. There's no doubt. These instructions paint a picture of what it is to be obedient to God, to be in, in God's people in that way. Yeah. Which is, I find that really encouraging as well as challenging. I think my instinctive thing is to be like, oh man, <laughs> what? God's telling me to do something. But actually, I think there's actually in that a huge encouragement all the way through Thessalonians of this is who I am. Mm-hmm. I, I really want to be that person. And he's giving me all the, all the not only the instructions, but the means by which we can do it. Which takes- yeah. Well, and I think the temptation is always to think, Lord, what's your will for my life? What's your will for my life? You know, kind of really wanting to know the details. He's giving very detailed instruction here for what his will is. It's to give thanks in all circumstances and it's to rejoice continually and to and to pray continually. And gosh, like, yeah, <laughs> just take take that. And, you know, if we were really to live out that command, we would begin to be a lot more thankful for his will because we'd we'd see the impact on our life and on others as we live that out in relation with others, wouldn't, wouldn't we? Rather than being fixated on what's what's the plan for my life kind of thing, which I think we can I can be tempted to fall into. Um, and then we've got the hope coming through at the end with this extraordinary prayer. Do you want to just kind of share a bit of what struck you about the prayer, Felicity? Yeah, I just loved the fact that he ends on a prayer. I mean, this is like mm. the, maybe the best moment in the book. I know you're not even going <laughs> to say that about a book, but I feel like, you know, this is, this is a strong... Can have your favourite moment. Yeah, yeah, okay. So may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you. I feel like this list is a picture of a sanctified life. Mm-hmm. If, that, if this is what God desires for us, this is will for us, this is a picture of it. And you're, you get to the end of the list and you're like, okay that sounds kind of hard and then you read the prayer and you think yes God himself will sanctify you through and through so Mm. by God's grace and strength that is the way in which we will live this life described and I love that you have it's God who sanctifies and it's God who keeps and we're very much the passive person in that aren't we so God is doing it rather than us and that that is exactly what I need to hear. Cause I am definitely someone who reads a list. I'm like, right, do it. Just get on and do it. And I think mm-hmm. prayer really helps me to actually stop, 
look to Lord, look to the Lord, pray, rest in Him, and seek to live out this life. Mm. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? It's a re- it's a really great prayer, and it's a really encouraging end because it just reminds us all along of we're waiting for Him. We're like that's the end game, isn't it? We're waiting mm. to be. We're like you know, yeah. May your whole spirit, soul, and body, all of you be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Like that's, that's what we're looking forward to. And so anything that we're doing up, you know, any of these instructions that we're then seeking to live out, it's because we're wanting to live out who we already are as those who've been sanctified and made blameless and are continuing on that path until he, until he comes again. Um, yeah. yeah. But, and, that, and that's just exactly what we need, isn't it? And I think through reading first Thessalonians, then that's been a really, big factor all the way through that the more we've thought on and heard about Jesus's return the more mm. our hope is, is bolstered in that is built up in yeah that. and that I think that's the th- Thessalonians angle isn't it in many ways because that's not something we talk about or think about very often but as we've been in the lesser then we've talked about it and prayed about it and and, and it's been very much on our horizon and as we yeah as we have it in view I think I've begun to see oh my this is the reason for the hope this is why I do have hope because I'm waiting on the certain hope of Jesus, Jesus's return. That God and, he is- end, and he ends on the note of grace, doesn't he? The, mm-hmm. the grace that he began the letter with, he ends on that note in verse 28. And again, just seeing that it's all through grace. It's all his gift to us. So anything that we can do to live out this love that he's, we've been shown by the Lord Jesus and modeled by Paul, that's all grace. Yeah. Like, which yeah. is extraordinary, isn't it? Brilliant. So, so just kind of briefly to kind of drive this to our hearts a bit more, what is it like to take seriously these commands? Well, I think, as I was saying at the start, it's tempting to just kind of skim through a list, isn't it? And just, mm. it's like Paul's final notes at the end. Um, and I think actually reading slowly, walking yeah. slowly through this list, committing them to prayer, um, that would be a sober minded approach to the list. And, mm-hmm. and because, because it finishes in prayer, like why wouldn't I pray these things in for us? Um, which I find challenging because that is then dependency first rather than activism. <laughs> rather than doing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's where, um, that's something I've been thinking about a little bit this week is what does it look like to, to depend on God in order to do these things? Mm -hmm. yeah what about you yeah I think similarly just thinking yeah what would it look like to take each of these commands and and really pray them through really think about them consider consider what that looks like in my location right here right now um with my my church family what does this look like to encourage the disheartened and to really just spend some time praying and thinking that through what does this look like to always strive to do what is good for each other? Like just, yeah, I think, as you say, it's that combination of praying that like asking the Lord to kind of reveal an insight into how I can best live this out. And also then writing down some ideas and praying those through as well. Um, yeah. So I think there's so much here. We can't, you know, there's so much here, but I think just it's <laughs> a starter, isn't it? Of Actually, we need to think this through. We can't just skim over this. This is integral to our witness as Christians on the ground. And that's why it's included. And um, um, yeah, and the all togetherness being, it would be so great to talk about this with someone in our local church, wouldn't it? Rather than just us yeah. sitting down, but actually, yeah, sit down yourself, but maybe it's then sitting with someone over a coffee. Yeah. Like, how can we together go about Yeah, big this? time. Yeah. yeah. You want to pray for us, Listy? Yes, sure. Father, we praise you so much for your grace. Thank you that it's you who's doing the sanctifying, you who keeps us, that you are the one who is faithful. Praise you that we see that so much in Jesus. And we pray that as we depend on you, would you enable us to live out this holy life? We pray that we'd be those who are ready to encourage, ready to help, ready to love, help us to to be patient with everyone. Father, would you help us to have our eyes out and looking um, to others? And in that, would we glorify you more and more? We pray that we might just live out this by your grace. Amen. Amen. 
So just a reminder that we've got our show note questions to discuss these things further. Do pick it up with um, a friend in your church family um, and seek to deeply apply what we've what we've been reading today. Yeah. Um, what does it look like to live this out on the ground? Yeah, the questions are there just to help you start those conversations. Um, and we'll be back next week to round up the letter. I know, I can't believe it's nearly over. I feel like this is, uh, we've been flying through, but good times, good times. And then one more episode to go. So we will see you next week. Yeah. All right, take care. Bye. Bye-bye. This episode is sponsored by Crossway.